Hey guys, George here. And this week, John's out here visiting us here in Durango, Colorado at our manufacturing facility. We're really excited to have him, and we're excited to show you how we manufacture our decoders here in Durango, Colorado. So tell you what, let's take a walk around. We'll show you the manufacturing floor. Okay, so first off, we get our circuit boards made for us by a company in Utah. And what they'll do is they'll build them into multiple decoders onto a single panel. And this is what a panel looks like, unpopulated. Now each of these little gold colored places is where a part is gonna go onto the circuit board. So to make these soldered onto the circuit board, what we do is we stick them into this machine. This machine is what's called a solder printer or a solder paste machine. And what it does is it will actually take this panel of decoders and put it up against a stencil. Now the solder paste is actually a tacky material, kind of about the consistency of toothpaste. And what this machine does is it applies even pressure across that stencil to make sure that solder gets apl applied to each of the points on the circuit board itself. Now this tacky material will be able to hold the parts when our pick and place machines put the parts on so that that way the solder joints can be made. Now once the solder paste has been applied to the circuit boards, they go to the pick and place machines. Now this is where all the parts are populated onto the circuit board itself. Now our parts such as resistors, diodes, capacitors, all those type of things come on these reels. And they're reels just like you would have a movie reel. And the parts are pulled off of that reel, they run a quick flash test, and then the machine will put the part onto the proper place on the decoder as it works its way across from decoder to decoder. Now as you saw, there were several decoders onto one panel, so these parts are being populated on all of those decoders across the way. Now each side is done separately, so the first side will run through the machines, the parts will get put onto there, and then they'll run it through the oven, which we'll talk about next. Once that's done, they'll flip it over, run it back through the machines after they set up and change the parts for side B, and then they'll run it through the process again. As I mentioned through this test, the machine will actually do a quick flash test on the part to make sure that it's within specs. Again, another way that we make sure that the parts and the decoders work the first time when you get it. Now once all the parts have been placed on the one side of the decoder through the two machines, it will come to the end right here where our technicians will then do a quick visual inspection. This way, our technicians can make sure that the parts are lined up properly and where they're supposed to be. A good visual inspection is a nice way to make sure that the machine didn't slightly askew a part or something like that. And if there is any problems, they can quickly fix it and adjust it before it hits the oven. Now the oven is where we go and put the decoder into to melt the solder and to make all the connections across the circuit board. Now once the decoders go into the oven, there are controlled temperature zones in the oven to make sure that the decoder is heated evenly and properly to make sure for proper adhesion and for the proper melting of the solder for each of the points. Now once the decoder comes through, there's a cooling period where it'll go through a controlled cooling to make sure that all the parts are joined at proper temperatures. Then once it's done, it spits out here onto the tray. Our technicians will then take them, rack them up, and get them ready for the other side. Then once they're done, they go through the process the same way, just flipped over and do side B. Then once they go through side B, now that's when we go through the testing process. This is where the testing really starts kicking in. This machine next to me is what's called the Flying Probe Tester. And this is one of the ways that we make sure that we bring a quality product to you out there as the model railroader. The Flying Probe Tester, as its name implies, has the sets of probes that fly over the circuit board. What this does is this tests that every solder joint is made properly. It tests that all parts are within spec and tolerance and do what they're supposed to do. And also it's just one extra way that we make sure that the decoder works the first time for you. So this is one of the items that we do because we want to make sure that the product is good and working for you when you get it home. Now after they go through the flying probe tester, this is when they're broken down into individual decoders. We have a set of cutting wheels that are guide along scored lines on this panel to cut them into individual decoders. Now again, we're not done there with the testing process. Now we come here to the individual test station, and this is where our technicians will test each individual decoder by hand to make sure that the decoder is functioning properly for you, again, so that you get a working decoder the first time. So how do we do this? So the first thing is, of course, we have to have a command station. So we have an NCE ProCab system set up right here, 
And then we have a small circuit board that simulates a locomotive. So you see a motor, you'll have a speaker, and then all the different lights across the panel here. And what our technicians will do is there's a cable, custom-made cable that we'll plug in here and then into the test fixture. And then what our technicians will do is take the decoder and put it here on the test fixture. Now each of these pins are spring-loaded pins so that that way they make the joints and the connections with the connection points on the end of the decoder. This one here I happen to have in my hand is for the TSU PNP8. So once the decoder is laid in place, this lever locks it down and these spring-loaded pins hold it in place. Then our technicians will go through a pre-described testing process to test the functionality of the decoder, not just for motor and lights, but sound, speed, and also go through a reset process just to make sure that the software and the firmware and everything is working properly the way it's supposed to. Now once it's done, they simply lift the lever, take the decoder out, they'll put their inspection sticker on it, or if they find a problem, they'll mark what the problem is and they'll set it aside. And that's where we'll fix or repair any problems that we encounter here so that, again, you're not the end of our quality control. So as some of the testing procedures, also you see some multimeters here, and they're also watching readings in various outputs to make sure that the decoders, again, are functioning the way they're supposed to. Now, one of the machines that's not actually running today is what's called the selective solder machine. And this is designed for work with through-hole components. So when you use a current keeper, those are capacitors that have to be hand-placed because they're through-hole. So our technicians will actually hand-place each of those capacitors onto the circuit board and then bend the leads to help tack hold it in place. And then what they'll do is they'll take the panel of current keepers and run them through this machine. Now this machine will actually spray solder flux onto each of the joints that it's supposed to. Then in the middle, there's actually a fountain of solder. And the fountain of solder is melted solder, and then the machine will actually take and dip each of those joints into that solder. Now the flux, because it's already on the joint, will draw the solder into the joint and make the connections. Now once that's done, it goes through our flying probe tester again to make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to. Now this machine here in front of me actually is what pre-programs and flashes the memory chip and the software and the processor before they go into assembly. So first step in any of the decoder manufacturing process is to flash the memory. So we put the chips in here, they come on a tray, and then this machine will take them over, usually four at a time, grab them, put them into the socket, and flash them all together, and then take them and put them on the finish tray. And that's where our technicians will mark them with which software programming is done. Now the advantage to this machine is that it speeds up the process quite a bit. Once upon a time here on the manufacturing floor, we had to do these individually one by one by hand, where we had a manual place of the chip, lock it into place, turn it on, and then load the software. Then when we were done, we would take it out one by one and put it on. So this machine frees up a technician for other tasks around the floor so that that way we can be more efficient in the manufacturing process. Our universal series decoders are designed with a plug-in harness to make manufacturing a lot easier. Prior generation Tsunami, the Tsunami 750, actually had hand soldered wires on it which slowed the manufacturing process but also made them cost uh, a lot more. So what we've done is we've designed different harnesses to plug in. So this machine here in front of us, along with the wire loom here, will help us make these harnesses quickly. We take the wires, we line them up into the process here, we stick the connector into there, we pull the wires up, and then we press it down, and this press fits all of the wires into there. So all of our harnesses, single-ended harnesses, are made right here during the manufacturing process so that that way we can keep the cost down. Now once the decoders are tested, everything's good, we're ready to go, we come over here to the packaging station and this is where our technicians will actually package the decoders. Right now you can see Scotty behind me and he's actually packaging Minikube speakers, getting ready for the next build. So this is the manufacturing process from start to finish on what it takes to build a Soundtracks decoder. So you can see all of the different quality control checks that we put into the process to make sure that you get the working decoder the first time and you also have that reliability with Soundtracks name. We manufacture here in the United States. We want to make sure you're getting United States quality product. Once everything's finished on the manufacturing floor, we have everything packaged and ready to go. It comes back here into the stock room. Now the stock room is where we inventory all of our final finished goods and are ready to ship out to our retail partners and to you so that you get that decoder in your hands. 
Now here you can see our shipping organized by part numbers so that that way we can make sure and keep inventory quick and easy to check as well as easy to pull and then we ship worldwide. Now in this half of the stock room, this is just one aisle and you can see all the raw parts are stored here also so that that way we can put together kits. So when our technicians are ready to build a particular decoder, say for example a TSU 2200, our technician will come back here, put together a kit of all the parts and stuff that they need to put that together, get it ready and take it out front so that that way during the manufacturing process they have everything they need. Now back here we'll store all the storage of capacitors, diodes, resistors, memory chips and everything and that's all stored back here including packaging and the raw circuit boards. And then when they're ready to build they'll come back here grab the parts and take them out front. So guys that was a quick tour of our manufacturing floor and our process so we are very proud of what we do here. We're very proud to show it off and again it's one of the things that helps me enjoy what we do here because we are manufactured here in the United States. We're not importing decoders and becoming just a warehouse for China made goods. So now that we've done downstairs let's go ahead and head upstairs and have a quick discussion with Nancy Workman co-owner of Soundtracks. So here we are in the Soundtrack studio. This is where we put together weekly videos on our YouTube channel to help keep you guys informed of any new information and also to help show you how some of the features work. Now upstairs here in the office, of course we have our sound studio, but we also have our sales offices. We have our customer service office and this is where if you do run into a problem, you would contact Michael, give him a call. If he can't resolve it over the phone, you can send the decoder back in. We can take a look at it. We can fix or replace as needed, get it back into your hands. Also up here we have our accounting offices, our marketing and advertising offices and all of that stuff as well as the engineering wing, which we won't go into today. So we won't go into the engineering side because we don't want to share too many of our secrets and upcoming projects, so be sure to stay tuned. Now with that, I'm going to go ahead and step aside. We'll bring in Nancy Workman, co-owner of the company, and say a few words to you guys. Hi, I'm Nancy Workman, CEO of Soundtracks. Uh, we've been in business for 31 years and uh, we're totally committed to manufacturing here in Durango, Colorado. We're very proud of the facility here that you've just had a tour of. We're, we're delighted that you could come along for a walk through our building. One of the things that we tried to do with this building is not only make it possible for us to continue to manufacture here in the United States, but to put into you know process a lot of the things that um, make it a great place to work. It's uh, been designed towards something called LEED principles, which means that we're using circulated air and LED lighting and lots of open space and we, we hope it's made it a terrific place to work as well as to allow us to be functionally efficient. We never want to see our product go overseas. We're, we're very proud of the fact that we make it here. Uh, hope that you all appreciate the efforts that we put in. We have a great team here and we really, really appreciate everything that you do for us because we wouldn't be here without you. Right. Take two. That idiot can't get it right the first time. Hi, my name is Steve-O, and today, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> All right, serious face. Uh, that didn't even like that. I kind of went into a brain momentary brain shock for a second. So I'm an idiot. <laughs> That'll definitely make. I'm sure it will. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll try this. Three's a charm. Take three.